look, Ma, no Amos. Because on this episode of the Rich Road Misery podcast, I am going solo, which coincidentally, I'm going to talk about the movie Solo. I'm also going to uh, talk about a few other things like uh, what it is about the weather, some 30 year old deadbeat. I'm going to actually talk about some poop later on. Welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 176 for Thursday, the 31st of May, 2018. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I am Kent, and tonight I am completely by myself. It appears that I am joined by BioCow in the chat. Uh, happy to have you along. Um, yeah, so Amos is on vacation this week, and it is just me. I did not want to leave you guys hanging this week, so I'm going to go ahead and see what we can get into today. Man, what a crazy week it has been. Oh my gosh. So I said Amos is on vacation. Um, I've got a vacation coming up next week as well. So I'll just go ahead and start out the show saying that, that we are not going to have a show next week. So there will be no ritual misery next week. I'll, uh, I'll get into a little bit later on on exactly what is going to be going on next week instead. Uh, but yeah, so Sassian and I and my youngest son are going to take a trip to Wisconsin. Uh, that's where I'm going to be. Amos is dizzing it up down in Florida. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing uh, all about that in the coming weeks. Uh, but yeah, man, lots of uh, lots of uh Exciting stuff going on uh, all around Ritual Misery Land. Uh, man, so a week or two ago, I talked about the show Cobra Kai, which is a, a YouTube Red show. It's an original show that's basically a continuation of the Karate Kid movies from, you probably remember those from the 80s, right? Well, I went ahead and got the YouTube Red free trial a uh, 30-day free trial, so that I could binge watch Cobra Kai. I watched all 10 episodes right in a row. It only took like four hours because it's a it's a pretty uh you know it's pretty pretty quick watch. Man, I gotta tell you, like it is so good. If you have any love at all for the Karate Kid franchise, if you enjoyed that when you were a kid like I did, oh man, what a ride! Like this show, it is so corny and goofy like you feel like it was made in the 1980s but simultaneously the writing is so so sharply written and so smart that like you cannot help but finish this show if you if you start watching it you're you're going to have to finish it like it, it's so well done i'm not going to spoil anything uh, i'm going to save that for actually something that's going on next week uh you know what i'm just going to go ahead and talk about it now so I am going to be on Cord Killers next week. I was actually going to be on this week, but with Tom and Brian doing all of their their traveling and you know Australia, all of that stuff going on, uh, they just didn't do Cord Killers this week. So my appearance has been pushed to next week. So that's going to be awesome. I'm going to talk possibly about Cobra Kai. I know they already covered Cobra Kai on Spoiler in Time, but hopefully they'll give me just a minute or so to to give them my thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a blast. Uh, the other thing that I watched this week, which I know for damn sure we're going to talk about on Cord Killers on Monday, is Solo, A Star Wars Story. Man, again, I'm not going to spoil anything because that's not the that's not the show for this. Uh, wow. I was a little bit concerned, uh, you know, Solo, Star Wars Story, uh, you know, it's going to be very derivative, it's going to be a lot of fan service probably, we're going to, we're just going to see the story that we already know, like we know that Han Solo meets Chewbacca, we know he's going to get the Millennium Falcon, like come on, uh, no, no, this movie is so much more than that. Yes, it's those things, sure, uh, but it is the most exciting adventure movie. Like if you, if you like star Wars at all and you just want to watch a movie, that's going to be so much fun and just make you feel like a kid again, uh, go see solo. 
there's a lot of negative press right now about the movie. But interestingly, it's like it's not about the content of the movie. It's about the low ticket sales. Like if you just go just search solo a Star Wars story and just just look at the news articles that come up, it's all about oh, they they're not making their money back. It's it's bringing so little money to the box office and blah 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 blah. And what are they going to do? What's Disney going to do with Star Wars now? Is Star Wars over? Man, don't listen to any of that crap. It's all noise. It's stupid. They're still making a, a crap load of money. Uh, it, it, sure, it's not making as much as like The Force Awakens made, uh, of course. But, uh, man, just go see it. it. It's pretty great. It's fantastic. Um, I had a blast. And uh, while we're talking about movies, let's go over to Big Voice J with... The B Team Diamond Club Movie Draft. Welcome to your B Team Movie Draft Minute presented by Diamond Club TV for the week of May 28th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice J. I've got one word to describe these next few weeks shorts. You're welcome, America. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team The Vod Squad is in last place, still waiting for their first film. Team Walking Drunk is in fifth place with $43 million. Team Movie Party's in fourth place, thanks to Solo, A Star Wars Story, winning the weekend and bringing their total to $244.7 million. Team Ritual Mysteries in third place with $359.6 million. Team Game Night is in second place with $357.7 million. And continuing the reign above all, each team have a drink with $707.5 five million dollars that's your movie draft minute all totals are accurate as of 7 p.m central wednesday may 30th 2018 oh boy uh, thank you big voice jay as always that was pretty great uh l- so looking at the chart man we knew it was going to happen ritual misery has slid from second place down to third place uh deadpool and solo a star wars story uh, making all the money. None of the Ritual Misery movies are making money anymore. Solo brought in uh, a little over $100 million this week. Uh, so, in fact, right now, it looks like their total is sitting at a little over $115 million. Uh, yeah, that was enough to knock us out of second place. We are sitting right now, looks like about uh, $5 million out of second. Uh, so we're, we'll see what happens. Uh, going forward, but man, it uh, it does not look good for us right now. I I think uh, Avengers: Infinity War is just it's going to have all the legs in the world, and I don't think anybody is going to catch up with have a drink. Uh, man, uh, yeah, that's just that's just crazy. But yeah, this game is so much fun. Um, I want to give one more shout out to W. Scottis One for arranging. Uh, the B team, uh, Diamond Club movie draft, uh, so much fun. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it is a blast. Uh, speaking of a blast, if you are having a blast listening to Ritual Misery podcast, please head over to patreoncom ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff going on over there. We try to give some exclusives to our patrons as often as we can. Some early episodes of shows. Uh, exclusive interviews, all sorts of cool goodness over there. Uh, check it out. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Another way that you can support us, we do go live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you can use your Twitch Prime subscription for free and give it to us. That is twitch.tv slash ritual misery. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get into a, a, a couple things. Uh, one, one thing I do want to do is give a shout out. Oh, speaking of shout outs, thank you, BioCow, in the Twitch chat for, for the bits. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a friend of the Ritual Misery podcast, Mark Jelinek. He is the host of the What Is It About the Weather podcast. He's been a guest on Ritual Misery before. All around, a really great guy. His show is a lot of fun. He just hit a hundred episodes of what it is. What is it about the weather? So I want to give a, a big congratulations to Mark. Uh, good job. 
he has decided to celebrate that milestone of 100 episodes as he is going to take some time off for the summer, uh, r- relax, refresh the show a little bit and see what some you know new stuff he can come up with, new ideas. And he's probably going to come back late summer, early fall, I think, with a with a refreshed show, possibly some new features. Uh, really looking forward to it. If you're interested in what he's got going on, what is it about the weather dot com? Man, so somebody that that doesn't have anything going on. Have you guys heard this story about the 30 year old dude that ha- does not want to move out of his parents' house? He has just been, you know, a deadbeat. His parents have actually given him an eviction notice. And he just said, ah, screw it. I'm, I'm just staying at home. I'm comfortable. They gave him several eviction notices, and he just ignored them. So they took him to court. Mom and dad took 30-year-old son to court, and the judge said, yo, dude, you got to get the F out. Uh. Yeah, so I guess that just finally happened this week. Why this is news, I have no idea. Uh, but there's a lot of news outlets covering this. Uh, this dude finally moved out of his parents' house. Uh, apparently, his cousin has a truck and was able to help him move, and he's going to stay at an Airbnb until he finds something more permanent. Uh, man, what the, what the hell? You know, the reason that this even came to my attention this week at all is because... Apparently, this dude, I almost said this kid, he's 30. This dude was able to afford moving out of his house because Alex Jones, yes, that Alex Jones gave him some money. I think he said $3,000. He, he gave this dude, uh, what, what, what is the guy's name? Michael Rotundo, or Rotondo, I guess. Michael Rotondo. Uh, Alex Jones got him on his his show on uh, Infowars to talk to him about that. I, I don't know. I don't I don't watch Infowars. Uh, every now and then I will I'll go to YouTube and just see some Alex Jones clips just to laugh for a couple of minutes. Uh, but I don't actually watch the show. But apparently Alex Jones had Michael Rotondo on his show and felt bad for him. So he gave the dude three thousand dollars and said, "Here, man." I hope this uh, you know helps you out enough that you can move out of your parents' house. <sighs> Man, what the hell? Th- I wish I had something clever to say. I'm just gonna say this guy. This guy is a freaking loser. He says he told the judge that he he doesn't have time to get a job because he is too busy concentrating on being a father, uh, which he is a father. However, he can't be spending time being a father because he lost visitation rights for his kid and can't even see his his, his father or his son, daughter, whatever whatever the child is. I, I, I have not seen anything with the gender, but he lost visitation rights for his child. Yet his excuse to his parents was that I am too busy being a father. I don't have time to get a job. Man. If I only had time for one thing, I, that, uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to quit my job. I am going to move back into my parents' house. Uh, I, I, I am going to, all, all I'm going to do is, is, is podcast 24-7. I might start uh, game streaming. And I'm just going to live at my parents' house. Uh, screw my job. I, you know, I don't need insurance. I don't need, uh, uh, I don't know, self-dignity. Um, I, this guy, I'm, you know, Michael Rotondo, if you're, if you're listening, like, dude, come on, man, grow the F up, get a life, uh, take this as a, as a late in the game, kick in the ass, kickstart to life. Like, man, I, I hope somebody gives you a job. I hope, I hope you like excel. Like, I don't know. Anyway. All right. Enough about Michael Rotondo. I, I just, that guy, that guy. Uh, all right, let's move on to something a, a, a little a little more fun. I so I I read a lot of news. I'm I'm a, a newsophile, I guess you could say. I I I really am addicted to news aggregators. So whether it's Apple News or Google News, you know, you can just go to like news.google.com. 
right? And you just get this this collection of news news articles from everywhere. I mean, it, it's absolutely everywhere. It's CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, BBC, NPR, like you name it. It's it's just across the spectrum. Uh, th- these news aggregators are great if you've never used them. Um, it, it allows you to see kind of the the overview of, of of what the world is talking about, and not necessarily from a a partisan perspective. Because you know how how it is. If you listen to Fox News, then you must be a, an ultra conservative. If you're listening to CNN or reading the Washington Post or, God forbid, the New York Times, then you must be, you know, some bleeding heart liberal, right? Well, I suppose there's some some truth to that in a way. If you only get your news from one source, and it happens to be a you know a hyper partisan source, then sure. I mean, that kind of uh, you know gets your your mind in in that way of thinking, that space, right? Uh, anyway, so these these news aggregators uh, allow you to just see the spectrum, right, and, and uh, give you like a balance of viewpoints. Something that popped up into my aggregator feed multiple times was pooping in space. Is this something you guys have ever thought about? What it's like to use the bathroom in space? I know when I was a child, one of my biggest dreams, my biggest dream, in fact, was to be an astronaut when I grew up. I wanted to be, when I was a kid, I wanted to be the first person to walk on Mars. That was my ambition. In fact, that's what made me think about joining the Air Force in the first place was uh, as, a, as a path to NASA and the space program. I ended up joining the Air Force, but I never became a pilot. I never became an astronaut. I never dealt with space whatsoever. So, you know, path diverged, right? But when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. And the one thing that I never thought about in space was how you use the bathroom. You know, you've got zero gravity or microgravity, right? Like almost zero. Uh, So one of the things that makes it very easy for us to use the restroom here on Earth is gravity, right? It... It pulls down the, the, the waste into the, the toilet, and you're able to, you know, take care of it, flush it, uh, you know, get rid of it. Well, in space, it's not that easy. You don't have the gravity to pull it down, so you have to place your waste into a receptacle of some sort, right? Well, apparently, it's very easy to pee in space because you've got this, like, uh, think of it as a funnel, attached to a vacuum hose, right? And it's it's a, a fairly easy process to deposit your urine into this thing. Not a big deal. But apparently pooping is another story. Seems to be a bit more of a challenge to poop. Because uh, <laughs> obviously this is a, it, you know, we're not talking about a single stream of, of liquid here. We're talking about, you know, something a little more of a, um, uh, 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 bulky, um, yeah, a little more difficult. So basically, what you have is 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 the same th- type of funnel system, right? Except you've got this like plastic bag lining that has a little hole in it, and you have to aim like you have to line everything up just right, and deposit your specimen, if you will, into this into this like little hole in this bag. And then it, it you know it does the whole like uh, suction packaging kind of thing with with the waste, right? Well, that's all fine and good, uh, albeit a, a challenging maneuver. It it's all well and, and good. It it it, it in, ends up being a good process, I guess, when everything works properly. So apparently, when uh, when you're done using the facilities, you can't just flush. It doesn't just go away, right? So it goes into this into this compartment where about once every 10 days, well, at least on the, the ISS, the International Space Station, they have a cycle of about once every 10 days, they they empty the compactor, if you will. It's where all the trash and the, the waste and everything gathers, right? And then they, they will fire that into the into the Earth's atmosphere where it just kind of blows up, just or not, not blows up, just like like burns up, right? It kind of becomes like a like a miniature meteorite, like a, a, a poop meteorite. Like a like, do you think anyone has wished upon the shooting star of someone's poop? 
like the the International Space Station shooting star of poop. What do you think would happen if you wished on a poop star? Would 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 that wish come true? Hmm. Maybe if you're constipated and your greatest wish was to just uh just to have a, a you know a good healthy go and if you wish that on a poop star, do you think it would come true? Anyway, all right, I'm getting off topic. So <laughs> All right, so anyway, the 10-day cycle for them to to dispose of their waste bin. Well, over the course of 10 days, especially when you have a crowded space station, eh, the waste can kind of mount up to be uh, quantitative, let's say. And sometimes everything just doesn't work right. It won't compact properly. So when that occurs... The astronauts oftentimes will have to don rubber gloves and actually pack the waste down into the the compactor, like manually with their hands. Um, uh, man, that absolutely sounds awful. But wait, it gets worse. That those are the challenges when the system works properly. When the system malfunctions, well, sometimes they just have to deal with, uh, shall we call them floaters? Uh, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, dreaming about going into space and being an astronaut, being the first man on Mars, or the first person even on Mars, Using the bathroom in space was not something I'd ever thought about. And I wonder if I could go back in time to, let's say, my eight-year-old self, and I had this conversation with him. Would he have changed his mind about his dream? Uh, I don't know. This is, this is fascinating. And apparently, uh, one, of the, one of the astronauts that has uh, a lot of experience, actually, in space on several missions uh, to the ISS... Uh, she, what was her name? Let me see what her name was. Uh, I'll find that here in a second. Um, Whitson, right? Uh, her last name is Whitson. Uh, anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll find her first name here shortly. Well, anyway, uh, she was talking about the, the many challenges of space, and she uh, uh, explained in an interview about how the toilets work and and all of that because it was, it was basically an interview about just life on the ISS and how how everything works and uh the conversation kind of went to the toilet and how that is probably the worst thing about space exploration and uh anyway so it 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 caught uh, it, uh caught fire I guess on the internet and all of the news outlets wanted to cover it and there's there's some cool videos about how the the toilets work in space, and and uh, oh, don't worry, they're 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 work friendly. They don't show any of the excrement. These are like new systems, like demo models, right? That they're just explaining how, uh, you know, theory of operation and all of that. Uh, so it's really neat. Um, I will have links to all of this stuff in uh, in the show notes. In fact, in in Twitch chat, I'm gonna throw a link in there. Uh, so all of the live viewers over at twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Uh, you guys can take a look. There's some really good links in here uh, to videos and whatnot. Uh, it's actually, it's really fascinating. It's really cool. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so so poop in space, right? So <laughs> so there's that. I, I thought that was interesting. I thought I could talk about that for a few minutes with you guys and see what you guys thought. Uh, but yeah, so speaking of poop, though, I've got something else to say about poop. So over in the Ritual Misery Discord, Acorns threw a note in there that said, Lift yourself is greater than this is America. Change my mind. And I decided that I'm going to address Acorns right here on the Ritual Misery podcast. Uh, all right, so what he is referring to, Lift Yourself is a song by Kanye West. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to Lift Yourself here in a second. Uh, so, This Is America is the uh, Childish Gambino song that Amos and I discussed uh, last week or the week before. Um, really amazing 
video, um, amazing song. The video kind of struck a nerve with with a lot of people for being a uh, a narrative on like the state of our country right now, and especially as it pertains to race relations and just kind of the. Uh, some of the issues and and uh, struggles, I guess, if you will, in the black community. Uh, very well done. the The video, the song, the music, the lyrics, the just the message all together is very well done. If you guys have not seen the music video for "This Is America" by Childish Gambino, I I still give it the highest recommendation. Check it out. Uh, but Acorns says that "Lift Yourself" by Kanye West is greater. Then this is America, <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna have to uh, respectfully disagree. Uh, the reason that I said, speaking of poop, not just because I think that the the Kanye West song is poop. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's actually it, it's not bad for what it is. But about two minutes into the song, this happens. Poopy do scoop, scoop dee dee whoop. Whoop de scoop de poop. And it goes on and on like that. That is, that's Lift Yourself by Kanye West. Uh, scoop de poop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would I would love for Acorns to elaborate on why why he, he feels less that's better than this is America. I, I would like to think that that he was being facetious if you will uh just trying to just trying to get a reaction out of us uh so here it is here's my reaction uh i think it's kind of silly to compare the two uh but it's a lot of fun the uh the video for lift yourself uh like it's only like two and a half minutes long and it's kind of neat actually it, it kind of reminds me of the the old uh like scat songs from like the early days of um Oh, I guess we could even say the early days of, of R and B, like rhythm and blues, right? Like a uh, a lot of like nonsense lyrics, but but set at a you know, a fast pace, kind of just a fun, um, uh, I, I don't know, like using using your 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 mouth as an instrument, I guess you could say uh, more than just saying you know uh, uh, you know well thought out lyrics that have an actual message in themselves, just using your voice more as an instrument. Um, so it's kind of neat stuff, and I think that's kind of what Kanye was was doing with the song to just kind of um, I don't know if he was wanting to pay tribute or if he just wanted to throw something weird out there to see what people say. Uh, but but using the word poop over and over again in his uh, like scat style uh, lyrics for that song uh, was an interesting choice to say the least. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. All right. So. Uh, so Acorn in the in the Twitch chat says, uh, I think This Is America was vague. Uh, interpretive, but I would have preferred something that is more explicit. Uh, and also goes on to say, Lift Yourself plus his recent uh, media interactions are more interesting to me. He's a madman, but he's talking about mental freedom. Yeah, Kanye, okay, okay. Uh, well said. Well said. Uh, yeah, Kanye West is a complicated, let's say a complicated artist, right? He's one of the uh, most celebrated, probably one of the uh, more talented musical artists that we've had in quite some time, right? I mean, I mean I'm not trying to take away from, from any other talented artists, but he's one of the most prolific for sure. Uh, this century, I mean, th this decade for sure, uh, if not this entire century, right? Uh, and, you know, recently he's had some, let's say, interesting uh, viewpoints on politics, and uh, I don't know. It, it's hard to say what his motivations are sometimes if he is just seeking attention if he is actually making a point and if the point is subversive or just explicit, like he, you know, taken uh, as face value. Right. Um, and I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't claim to understand Kanye West. And I don't think, uh, I, I would say that very few people on this planet could probably 
accurately say that they 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 understand Kanye. Um, I don't know, but he he's entertaining. Either way, he's he's entertaining. He's attention getting. Uh, yeah, think what you want. Love him or hate him, he definitely is an a- attention getter. Uh, but anyway, so that's <laughs> that's my take on scoop diddy poop or whatever it is he says. All right, guys, uh, this episode is going to be kind of short. I'm going to leave it at probably right about 30 minutes, but I, I, I want to read an email that I got from Flavor Toothpaste. I say that I got, that Ritual Misery received. Uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com if you would like to email the show. We say all the time, email us, and we will read it on the show. We don't care what it is. Uh, if you create something for us, we will show it, play it, uh, whatever it is. You write us an email. Uh, we will go ahead and and uh, read that out loud on the show. And uh, that's what we're going to do right now. So Flavor Toothpaste writes, and he says, if it makes Big Voice J feel... So Big Voice J, obviously, is the, the guy that has provided uh, many different sound bites and inputs to this very show. And he is the one that does the Movie Draft Minute for us every week. So Flavor Toothpaste goes on to write, If it makes Big Voice J feel better about only recently having seen the first Deadpool movie, I only just watched, for the first time, The Incredibles. You know, that movie that came out 14 fucking years ago? So, uh, don't feel too bad. He goes on to say, Quick Hits. Hot Beverages is the best friend pal to us all and Momo. Jackie Hearn will always be the first and only Jackie Hearn in all our hearts. San Dimas High School Football Rules! Uh, Thank you very much, Flavor Toothpaste, for the email. I'm going to have to agree with everything that you said. Hot Beverages is in the chat right now, and uh, I agree. She is the best friend pal to us all. And Momo. (laughs) So anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's podcast at ritualmisery.com if you want to send anything to us. All right, so... To reiterate what we've got going on over the next couple of weeks here on the Ritual Misery podcast, Amos is on vacation starting this week. That's why you're getting a solo show in your ear holes this week. This coming Monday, I am going to be on Cord Killers, the show where you get to learn all about cutting the cord, the technologies, and uh, all the things that go into... uh, Streaming services, uh, how, how how to get or uh, what is their tagline? Uh, so it's it's Brian Brushwood and Tom Merritt and Bres Castillo, uh, uh, bringing you the the. Oh wait a minute, I'm I'm mixing up the shows now. Uh, anyway, so how to watch what you want when you want where you want uh, something like that. Anyway, Court Killers is awesome. I'm gonna be on that this coming Monday. Uh, check it out. I know it, it streams on DiamondClub.tv. I believe it's on Twitch.tv slash Night Attack. Uh, hopefully somebody in the the chat can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it's definitely on DiamondClub.tv. Then, the uh, so a week from today, there is not going to be an episode of Ritual Misery because Amos and I will simultaneously be on vacation and just logistically, it's not going to work. And also, it's kind of nice to just take a vacation once in a while. And that's what we're, what we're both doing. Then, the following week, on the 14th of June, the one, the only, Tom Merritt, will be our guest right here on the Ritual Misery podcast. So, please look for that. Um, someone else that we may be having as a guest fairly soon our old friend of the show mr steve perry no not the one not the not the singer from journey uh but the author steve perry that we've had on the show a couple of times in fact last year for our may the 4th celebration we had him on he is uh probably most widely known as a star wars author he wrote shadows of the empire uh, which was a very popular Star Wars book from, uh, believe, was it late 90s, early 2000s? It's, it's been out for a while. Uh, those that are listening to this as a podcast, there will be a link to that book in the show notes, so you can check that out. I, I highly recommend the read. Uh, anyway, but the reason that he was on my mind 
was when I watched Solo, there's something in the movie, which I'm not going to reveal here, but tune into Cord Killers on Monday, the 4th of June, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk about this. Uh, there was something in the movie that Steve Perry actually created for his book, Shadows of the Empire. And I sent him an, him an email saying, like, you know, hey, man, uh, is this is this your uh, the, your creation? And he was like, yep, sure is. So I think we're going to have him on the show in the near future so that we can bring him on and, and talk all about that. Uh, I want to give a, everyone a chance, uh, you know, give a few weeks, let some some time pass since Solo's release so that, uh, you know, people will have a chance to see it. And then if we accidentally spoil something during our interview with Steve, that uh, it won't be as big a deal. All right, guys, uh, that is going to do it for us here on the Ritual Misery podcast. Uh, you can find everything that I do on Twitter. I am RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, you can find me just about anywhere else on the Internet to include Untapped, where I give my beer reviews. I am Del Noche there. I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche 77, just about anywhere where on the Internet that you can go. Uh, if you want to find out what Amos has going on, and maybe he's going to post some of his his Diz pictures, uh, you can find him on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas to our subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all of these links and much, much more and ways to support the show over at ritualmisery.com. We're live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv. I knew I was going to do that. I made the music come in too too strong. Um, DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Until next time, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>